for me, it's, it's a third generation DAOs, you know, just like the blockchain is going through its own iterations, right? First, second, third generation of blockchains. I think DAO is going through the same transition now. And what we're trying to do is really see if we can add more value to the idea of building an organization on the blockchain, you know? uh, creating an organization in a box, as we call it, that has all of the things you need to run a traditional organization, a new kind of organization, a, a DAO, LLC, you know, any of these uh, organizational forms that are coming up um, can be embedded in this, what we call it's a container, right? It's a vessel for you to onboard people. And let me give you a few um, ideas of these uh, new features, these third generation features we introduced. Um, we already touched upon, you know, the voice token, the idea of a separate token for voice. So any activity you do inside the DAO, you earn voice, right? You earn voice over time. And that's how you establish trust inside the DAO. You know, at our foundation is really the idea of building the relationship, building the trust that is necessary to work in a trust less quote unquote environment, right? So we even called our DAO the DHO for a while, you know, decentralized human organization instead of the decentralized autonomous organization. So it's really important to establish that level of trust. And you can only sort of give this trust to others in the organization because they've shown up consistently, you know, they they have provided uh, any kind of contribution to grow the thing, the entity, whatever it is, right? A DAO can be really anything from, you know, a traditional co-op to a, a startup to even you know, like a village or a, a movement, you know, you can you can wrap all of this inside the DAO. And in order to enable that, we really you know, established a whole range of uh, features that we believe are really important, uh, like badges. Uh, we have smart badges that enable additional functionality once you become a holder, right? We have um, new advanced proposal types that especially, you know, look at, say, uh, a policy proposal, you know, with versioning, you know, you can amend policies. Uh, we have types like a quest where you can invite others to run a quest, uh, very similar to um, the, a worker proposal system where your bounties, but here it's more like aligned towards uh, the container, the space inside the DAO, right? So you run your quest, and at the end of the quest, the members who are inside the DAO were present will vote, right? And uh, coming back to the voting mechanism for us, it's important to give a variety of tools, you know, to say it's your space, you own that, it's your data too, it's it's decentralized. We are now in a in a web three space, right? And if you look at this, you know, every every twenty years the internet goes through a dramatic, you know, paradigm shift. You know, forty years ago, you know, web one, Tim Berners Lee, twenty years ago, the commercial web, right? The big players, centralized players, extractive data. Now we're shifting back towards um, a more decentralized web where you are the owner, right? You own these spaces, you own the data, and you can do whatever you want to do in these spaces. That's the fascinating thing, you know, that it happens at the same time, right? While we're launching these next generation DAOs, you now the people are here, the mindsets are shifting, you know, from these uh, more traditional competitive frames that we have, you know, that we've grown up in, you know, in Web2, in, in, in traditional organizations, right? Towards a much more cooperative mindset, right? For us, this is the beginning really of a transition to say, hey, these DAOs are the ideal vehicles, right, to create much more cooperative spaces that are open, right? That are participatory, where people can show up in any capacity they have, and we can start to reach out and build our own networks, right? The DAOs and the DAO to DAO, um, uh, you know, value exchange and knowledge exchange. But more on that later, you know, I just wanted to give you an overview of uh, why we think now it's the time to sort of introduce the next layer on top of this Web3 stack that we're building here together, right, with others.